electricity meter what we got then in today's video subject is another coin operated prepayment meter and what we're going to be looking at today in this one is the Smith Ferranti type APQ now this one is a replacement to the one which showed on my previous channel which had a white front case on it and that white front case was basically a uh, reconditioner's reproduction version of the original case. The one we're about to see, it does have an original front case on it. And it's even got its uh, specification plate. It's got a proper specification plate in there. And we're going to be zooming out now and having a look at it. Okay, so this is the Smith & Ferranti Type APQ. There it is then. So what we're looking at there is what I'm going to be referring to as a transitional meter from uh, Smith over to Ferranti on the basis that the kilowatt hour based section on that, although it says Smith meters in there just underneath the load wheel, the workings inside there are actually for anti. There's no two ways about it, right the way down to the load wheel characteristic, which is 225 revs per kilowatt hour. The layout of the kilowatt hour readout dials and the little adjusting screw for the accuracy magnet, uh, which is situated there just under the load wheel. I'm going to zoom in now and we should do the characteristics for this one. I'll just get that camera into position. Here we go. Here it is then. So we've got the uh, Smith & Ferranti Type APQ then. Creaky tripod. Right, there we go. That's all the characteristics right there then. So we're looking at single phase two wire. 240 volts, 50 hertz alternation frequency. 20 to 60 amps loading capacity on this one. And the load wheel characteristic is 225 revolutions per kilowatt hour, which is very typical of Ferranti. Even though it is Ferranti workings in there, just underneath the load wheel, it says Smith Electricity Meters Limited, Great Britain. Underneath that, we've got three screws then. If I can just clear this information off the screen. There we go. I can see that now. So we've got three adjusting screws underneath the load wheel then. The two to the left and right are basically two screws that hold on the entire assembly for the accuracy magnet. Whereas the one in the centre is an adjusting for the to set the accuracy, to pull the accuracy in. Okay, if I zoom in on that a bit further, you will see that there's little arrows either side of that uh, of that screw. There we go. And although you cannot see it in that display window, just underneath the uh, how can I put it, where the casing is, if you were to look down inside there, it does actually say plus and minus on there. Okay, but it's not visible in there because of the positioning in of the specification plate and the the, uh, the casing which I might like to point out it was uh, well I would like to seem to think it was a design of Smith's anyway just underneath that then we've got a instruction plate that tells you how to operate the instrument just there it says turn handle to right insert coin and press home Turn handle as far as possible left. Do not insert further coins when pointer reaches red sector. That red sector is in reference to what's going on in the centre window there. Creaky tripod. Okay. So as you can see there, we've got the centre window then. 
right at the top it says set at and then there's two rates you've got rate a rate b this instrument is currently set on rate b so what we should be doing then is reading the internal red scale on that scale there that's, that's on there so right at the moment then uh, the pointer is on zero because there's no credit left on this one there we are so there's no credit left on this one so the the markers on that go up in increments of four so it's 4 8 12 16 20 and we've got 40 16 AC okay the maximum that could be put on that if it were at all possible would be 88 units okay you've never actually worn that point around that far because uh, inside the coin mechanism there's a little gate and when the pointer goes around into that red section of that dial the little gate up operates just underneath the uh, coin register and what it does it causes the coin register to uh, the coin mechanism to jam and uh, it's a perfectly normal operation it's just to prevent the meter from being overwhelmed because if you were to do that it would damage it it would damage the workings inside not to mention you'd lose all your prepaid credit that you had applied onto it okay and then when the pointer winds back down maybe to where it says number 60 on that red section uh, the little gate will deactivate and the coin the previously inserted coin will then drop into the coin box just for reference this one accepts 10 bents coins as it can be seen on the coin box there so it says 10b coins but i might like to point out that those are the pre-1992 10 pence coins okay so therefore being pre-1992 10 pence coins you could have put a shilling inside that a two shilling coin shall I say so then let's look at the other scale on there which is the A rate and that goes up in increments of one okay so we've got one two three four five and then we got ten the other number you can't really see it there is a fifteen and twenty okay this tripod is a bit wobbly and creaky there it is. Okay, so you can see the 15 and 20 now in there. There it is. And just underneath that then we've got a coin register. And this one's showing that 18 coins have been inserted. Okay. Of course, being given the age of this instrument, it's obviously a bit more than that. Because once that reaches 999, it will just click back over to zero and carry on. So there it is. On the coin mechanism, then we've got a range of numbers all the way around that. Okay, and it shows rate A and rate B on there. When setting that rate, for the rate A, you can set that between 1.0 and 4.7 units per coin. I'm just trying to center that in the middle of the picture. There we go. So you can set that between 1.0 and 4.7 units per coin on the A rate. And that's in increments of 0 0.1 of a unit. And for the B rate, you can set that between 4.0 and 18.8. .8. And the increment on that is 0 0.4 of a kilowatt hour. As I've already said, that takes the pre-1992 10 pence coin. And if I quickly pick the camera up, because we've only got four minutes left on on the battery, I've got a couple of 10 pence coins on top there. There they are. And as you can see, the pre-1992 coin is the one over to the right there. But the post-1992 10 pence coin is a smaller one. Okay. So... The electricity meter accepts this one, not this one. There we go. You can see the size difference between those. There we go. And of course, the old two shilling coin was exactly the same size as that 10 pence coin. So therefore, that would have gone in the coin mechanism as well.
so there it is then i hope you enjoyed watching that one what you've been looking at there then is the smith and ferranti type apq with other instruments of this design they were either uh, smith meters or ferranti meters the smith meters include the apr and the apm but the ferranti only instruments include the fpq 102 and the F2K50B. What we got there in front of the camera is what I'm going to be defining as a transitional meter from Smith over to Ferranti. Okay, because with the APR and the AP, uh, the APR and the APM, they were Smith instruments. Okay, and they were entirely Smith right the way through, and made no reference to Ferranti. Whereas the FPQ-102 and the F2K-50B, they were entirely for anti and made no reference to Smith. What you're looking at there on the wall is a transitional meter whereby basically it's, it says Smith electricity meters in it. It's even got the instruction plate underneath that on the outer case, which is very typical of Smith. But the internal workings for the kilowatt hour readout section are without a doubt for anti. So I'm going to be describing this one as a transitional instrument from Smith over to for anti. Okay. Hope you enjoyed watching that one. It's time to go now. And there's going to be more electricity meter videos coming up a bit later on as and when. So thanks for tuning in to watch this one.